Hello YouTube, my name is Rob Diaz and welcome back to another episode of Not, Not, Not Totally, what the hell am I talking about, that's the other series I do, uh, to Can They Be DLC episode 18 and we are so very close to the end of season 1 of Can They Be DLC with season 2 coming after E3, the rest of the season will be next week. And this episode will be about Heiachi, but before we get into Heiachi, we'll talk about two quick, brief things. First one is uh, the Nintendo plans for E3 have been confirmed, so we now know that during E3 we're going to be getting a, a Nintendo Direct that will be happening on June 11th. And let me just get the things right. June, where is it? Jesus, is it really? Okay, I was about to say, really? Did I find it out? Jesus. Uh, the Splatoon the World Championships uh, will happen on June 8th, the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate World Championships uh, 3v3 will happen on June 8th as well, right after the Splatoon one. The Nintendo Direct will happen on June 11th, like usual, and then after the Nintendo Direct will begin the Treehouse Live. Uh, so yeah, interesting to say that the first time in, uh, I believe, three years now, yeah, this will be the, the first time, the first E3 out of the last four uh, that will not take a special look at a game. 2016 was Zelda, 2017 was Odyssey, 2018 was Smash Bros. Ultimate. And can I just say, people still complaining about Smash Ultimate's thing, about, oh, it was 30 minutes of Smash. You're an idiot. I'm sorry, but you're an idiot. If you watched it, you knew that the last thing they're going to talk about would be Smash Brothers. You knew from years previous, from the exactly one year before, they announced Nintendo Direct, they gave the, the uh, name... Uh, a special mention in this case in, in 2017 Odyssey you knew that once the, everyone's here Trevor ended up that was the basically the end of everything that not related for Smash so the direct was about the same thing if you want to complain about the patch notes go right ahead you just look plain dumb in my opinion anyway another thing that makes people look plain dumb is the people complaining that Nintendo talked about oh we're gonna be talking about only 2019 we're talking about 2019 games and people are already losing their minds because, you know, no 2020. Despite the fact that 2019 can still have some surprises and 2019 is still a packed year, you know, it's not like they did it last year when they said we'll only be talking about 2018 and literally open with a 2019 game and then show later on another 2019 game. So, you know, it's not that difficult that they're going to be talking about 2019 or 2020, I should say. And the other thing I want to talk about is the most recent Google theory thing for Smash Bros. I haven't been able to replicate and it's a theory that says that you can look up four characters uh, on Google uh, on a European um, Google site. You would have to clean your cache uh, in history I believe. You have to put it, you have to sign off from your account and put, uh, not clear, not clear your, your history but like put your um, account so that it has a, a sign off um, search off so that means that the computer will not be using the already used search terms from your IP address I believe I think that's what it means and then you have to look for the name of the character and then Smash Brothers Ultimate and it will give you an ad for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Fighters Pass there's some characters that have been able to be pulled um, four of war Benjamin Kazooie what well, was Benjamin Kazooie Doom Slayer Artorias or Arturias, I forget the name of it from Dark Souls and Ru Ryu Yabusa. If these are the five characters or the four final characters, I'm fine with them. Honestly, uh, a little bit weird that we won't be seeing a first party, uh, kind of weird that we won't be seeing Square Enix um, because right now it seems inevitable one of them will, will, a Square Enix character will make it in, but hey. We have seen recently that what seems inevitable doesn't exactly happen. So, yeah. Uh, one thing that I saw, and Push doesn't prove how easily somebody could have um, done this uh, to troll everybody, and after the Grinch leak, that one pushed past somebody to make these four characters requisites to do it on just the European uh, version of Google. So, you know, uh, one thing, I believe it was Papa Gino that were talk was talking about this that I didn't particularly find it very interesting that was a point that he said against it was that he, he found it weird that uh, no DLC character was going to be female which if you remember Smash Ultimate if we Smash 4 if we take the fact that Bayonetta was uh, a ballot winner and that she wasn't planned for DLC all the main all the play all the DLC characters were also dudes 
Mewtwo has no gender, so that technically speaking doesn't count. Roy, Lucas, Cloud, and Corrin, and, and, and Cloud were all male, with Ryu also being a dude. And then Corrin's default was a dude with only a costume being the female. Default is a guy, despite the fact that the female probably should have been the default, but the, the default is a dude. So, is it, is it weird? It would basically be the same thing with Kazooie being uh, the, the only female of the five. Uh, to bring that up feels weird to me. It's one of those things of like it, it's not you're not putting up any points against it You're just bringing up gender for no reason to find something weird When history con kind of contradicts it if we are to believe that Bayonetta was not planned from the beginning And even if she was she was technically speaking the final character DLC Which we could still be getting a sixth character DLC uh, because there's now the speculation, what if Joker just stole the, 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 the invitation? That's why we have one more slot on the stage select screen that will be left blanked out. And I know that sixth one might be for uh, putting sp uh, stages from um, Stage Builder on and off in, I believe, random form. But I don't believe that will be the case. I think that right now that is in there so that it's easier for people to do it. I think it might just be turned on to a toggle in the future or in, in, even in the menu or just have the, the thing appear above the screen uh, like above the, 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 the stage select screen and then the final thing will either be an, an arrow pointing to another unveiling of stages or will be a final stage care, stage thing. Another thing that happened this week in Smash Bros. Ultimate was a coincidence, it's a weird coincidence, that it looks like Great Man is frozen in ice on Battlefield. And that's interesting. Now, that probably means nothing. That probably, uh, most likely is a coincidence. But there's that 1% chance that Rayman is going to be in Smash Ultimate. It will be pretty cool if the final thing, like if there is a 6th character, uh, that's why I was talking about the character things. If there is a 6th character, it's him bursting out of that ice. That would be pretty cool to see. Uh, but I think that'll be it for the news. And seven minutes in, that's just become just become a, a regular thing on this on this series. Now let's talk about Heiachi from the Tekken series. So, how likely is Heiachi? Well, Namco Bandai is making the games, and somehow, some way, they haven't gotten a single character. We didn't get an Echo in Ultimate. They just got Pac-Man. That was it. Uh, Konami went from zero characters in four to three characters in Ultimate, which was, you know, kind of BS. Uh, Sega has now three. Um, Square Enix seems to be like the most likely candidate to get another DLC rep, which would put it also at two, and that's Square, one of the most uh, difficult companies to negotiate with. And who else? Like Capcom also has three, and they are not even supporting the Switch or correctly, I should say. Uh, and they could even get another character in, 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 in Ultimate. A, a very likely one would be a Monster Hunter character. Uh, but Nemco hasn't gotten one. Now, in 4, Heiachi was considered, I believe, for the base roster before Sakurai decided to go with Pac-Man. Now, I'm, I, I'm a little weirded out that he went with uh, Heiachi before he went with Pac-Man, given the fact that Pac-Man is is a much more iconic character. Now, I guess the moveset would have been easier to make, in a way, but still, it's weird to me. Um, Sakurai also said that he had some difficulties implementing Heiachi in Smash 4, but then again, he also had trouble uh, implementing uh, Ridley into Super Smash Bros. 4 because of his size, and although he still looks kind of weird, it's a workable character in Smash Ultimate, so it very likely could, uh, they could do it. Now they have more time, most likely more money um, and yeah and with the way Smash Bros Ultimate has been selling um, we're gonna be getting a season 2 at this point I'm almost convinced and again again it's one of those things that it seems inevitable and then it doesn't happen but I, I do feel like it's one of those more likely things to, to happen is another DLC uh, pack even if Sakurai is not working on it it just seems way too likely the next Switch, or the Switch 2, should probably won't be coming out until like 2023, 2022. Um, because, yeah, 2022 will be the fifth year of the Switch on the market. So 2023 seems like the more likely year for Switch 2 to come out. And I would, I would, if I was Nintendo, honestly, I would take Smash Ultimate, 
And until 2021, I would putting out, be putting out characters, one more fighters pack, and then do Ultimate 2 on the next system, port Ultimate to, the, to, to Switch 2, which, assuming it's called Switch 2, uh, port it over, port, port the game over, we uh, then might give it another, like, do it like the Switch, and I think that's what Nintendo's planning on doing with, with the Switch 2, is begin with Zelda and, Polk, uh, Zelda and um, Mario Kart, very close to the launch of the system, uh, and then wait another year to have Ultimate, and I think that would be a good idea. Give it more time to faster, more time to create more characters, and even create a new story mode, and new ideas. So with all of that, for pa for Pack One, uh, Hayachi, be or technically speaking, for one of the Challenger Packs, because it's Fighters Pass One, and each character is a Challenger Pack. Uh, for Challenger Pack 2 or 3, I don't think he's likely, I don't think so, currently I'm thinking Herdrick is Challenger Pack 2, that will be revealed and launching at E3, Pack 3 will be Benjamin Kazooie being revealed at E3 and launching midway through August, uh, Hey Achiel though, I do believe, and this is kind of a, a, my theory, is that uh, August is when I think Benjamin and Kazuli are launching. Sakurai confirmed I believe, that, they, that, that the team was working on Challenger Pack 1, which was Joker, Pack 2 and Pack 3. So characters 2 and 3 already were in development when Joker was in development, I believe earlier this year or like late last year, I believe it was earlier this year. Um, so it's very likely that we're now going to be getting these two characters uh, in two, two months and then two months. So right now we're in May. Today is the 11th of May. We are one month away from E3. I'm saying that in one month we'll be getting Herdrick, most likely. And then two months from then, it will be uh, when we get Benjamin Kazooie. But do you notice something? Outside of Joker and probably Herdrick, you get a, you know, outside of Joker basically, you get a character, or the character is revealed, couple months go by, uh, it gets launched, uh, and then I think that once that character is launched, we're going to be getting a new character trailer. Outside of making E3 feel special, or the tournament itself, the, the Smash tournament, being special and then the Shadow Drop at E3, um, for Herdrick and not having too much weight, I think what they're going to start doing, and it's the smart business decision, is announce a character. Uh, and now release a character and announce a character along with it. So Herdrick gets announced uh, Or whenever character gets announced at E3 gets shadow dropped Announce the, ne the next one. Announce character 3. Uh, when character 3 comes out You have a little direct or something in it, be it in a direct, a direct specifically for Smash, a video like it was for Joker Then reveal the next one And then once the next one is revealed one, Once that comes out reveal the final one. If, the, if it is the final one then great uh, maybe wait until you can announce it and release it. That way, people don't get upset that they didn't get it. Uh, the character that uh, they have to wait for, then the character come out, and then that's it for Smash. Um, but still, could do it. Uh, so, if I had to guess, Hatch could be one of the, the things. My idea was, it's Herdrick at E3 or Challenger Pack 2 at E3. Challenger Pack 3 comes out in August. What happens in August? Evil. At Evo, Nintendo announces either a Nintendo Direct, Shadow Drop, Benjamin Kazooie, and say like, oh, Benjamin Kazooie or Pack 3 is out right now, but maybe even Sakurai is on stage. Uh, but at the, at the event, the, sh the thing is packed with people because it's going to be probably a Sunday game. It's going to be like one of the most viewed ones. The hype is going to be there. Sakurai comes on stage and says, oh, and by the way, we have one more thing for you uh, regarding Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and boom, they announced Heiachi with to be determined as a release date. Well, not really, uh, yeah, announced Heiachi with a release date. That will be cool, that will make kind of sense in this idea of like, Pack 2 gets announced, gets announced a release, Pack 3 gets announced, Pack 3 gets released, Pack 4 gets announced. I think it will be a good idea, Evo would be the perfect place. Uh, maybe they won't do it at EVO like, oh, here's the announcement, uh, and then, uh, because most Smash fans won't be looking at EVO, uh, but at the same time, it's good to remember that Shulk got announced from out of nowhere, basically, for Smash 4, so it could work, 
uh, when it comes to moveset, they could do a lot with the Tekken character, um, if you have time. Uh, the one thing kind of was blocking, or could be blocking Hayachi's chances in Smash Ultimate, is that recently his voice actor passed away, and in Japan they don't really re recast uh, voice actors all that often, uh, unless they really have to. Uh, like Boma in Dragon Ball Super, the actress, voice actress for Boma died with midway through the through Super, so they had to change it. And I don't believe they in Japan uh, change voice actors that often, unless they really have to or something. And the voice actor just passed. And since Hayachi and uh, spoiler warning for Tekken in Tekken 7, in the story one of Tekken 7, Hayachi also passed, which could mean that. Um, he won't be involved in the story in future games, but still be there because, of course, he will be there. It's Heiachi in a Tekken game. He'll be playable, but not, maybe not uh, as part of the story. Um, so they might just reuse voice clips. That's what I'm thinking they will do as well for Smash Ultimate. Just reuse voice um, uh, for the character. Like, he taught like grunts and stuff like that from, from the years past. I don't think Heiachi has an American or a European voice actor for the West, so if the trailer, in the trailer he won't speak most likely, uh, or they could, I was gonna say they could reuse it, like the thing I was thinking was like, for them to announce Heiachi the trailer would have to include Ryu in some way, shape or form, um, because you know, Tekken vs Street Fighter uh, happening in Smash would be fun. And yeah, I guess that'll be it for this part of the video. So let's go on to the comments from uh, the last uh, week in the direct, not direct, the 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 the, 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 the Gandhi DLC videos. So first we have Ganon Heiss uh, with Leon would be a good choice for Resident Evil character. And yeah, I agree. That's why he is the thumbnail character. Uh, and I would say he's the most likely one. Resident Evil 4 is a pretty popular one. I believe he's still the most popular of the Resident Evil games, despite I don't know. It's not, I, I, don't, I don't think it's the best selling, but I believe it's the most popular to this day, or regarded the best uh, amongst the fan base. Uh, and then Terry Servantson said, in regards to Hatch, I think Sakurai or someone who worked on the game said that he tried to get Heiachi as a full character in Smash 4, but his moveset was too difficult to implement, but I think they could get Heiachi to work this time, and maybe they could add some more Tekken costumes, Tekken character costumes for the Miis. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, they would go with the, the, the pack, uh, the, 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 the Mi costumes theory going around, that every character would bring in Mi costumes from that company. Uh, that's one of the things that leads people to think that um, we'll only be getting DLC uh, from third parties. Uh, yeah, it would make sense. Uh, I, th I also heard that from the, they have difficulties implementing him. But my question about that is, did they have difficulties implementing him during the time of um, uh, getting the game out for the base game or implementing him again in DLC? If it's the first one and didn't try for DLC, maybe we could see it now. In Woody else they have more time, it can work more freely. Uh, for again, like I said earlier, Sakurai said before Joker came out, I don't remember when, but he said, I believe it was Sakurai, that they were working on characters 1, 2, and 3, so Joker, character 2, and character 3. So they were working on three characters at the same time, where in the base, in the base game, they were working at, at the bare minimum five to six characters at any given time, and that's being generous to get 70 characters in the game in what was it two and a half years it's gonna be more than that uh it's gonna be more than just a few characters i believe that the thing came up after piranha point came out that news i've heard about it i remember where uh the costumes they could they could do it uh maybe like um i was gonna say Jin. uh Technically speaking, they could get like one that would be cool to see would be Akuma. I know he's a Street Fighter character, but he also appeared in Tekken 7. So it could be one of those, like maybe it's Tech, well, maybe uh, Capcom is not getting a character DLC. It seems like things between the two companies are kind of frosty at the moment between Nintendo and Capcom. It seems like after, uh, after Monster Hunter World, the things are not going too well there. Nintendo doesn't really... Uh, um, advertise Capcom games anymore and Capcom is not putting too much effort 
on the Switch, which also reminds me a little bit thing I wanted to point out that's really weird from Capcom this year is that they're expecting from financial from this financial year 2019 to 2020. So from April 2019 to March 2020, they expect to make more money and have more sales despite not releasing a single big AAA game uh, and they expect it to grow, their business to grow. I don't get it, it's like last year they had um, Devil May Cry 5 and uh, what was it, what's the game, what's the name of the title, Resident Evil 2 Remake come out uh, in the financial year and this year they only have the Monster Hunter World um, update. Just saying, it's a little bit weird to do that. It, I, I would guess they would want to like to, uh, lower expectations for shareholders. But anyway, that'll be it for this video for episode 18 or Can They Be DLC, which will be the penult which is a penultimate of the season. Uh, next episode, of technically speaking, season finale will be on uh, well, Dova King and yeah, Dova King, Dragonborn from Skyrim. Uh, so yeah, the uh, next episode will be basically the last one we will rate and talk about the possibility of a character before. Season finale that would happen, uh, let's see, on June the... June, June, June the 2nd, where we're gonna revisit every, see, every character so far. And then technically speaking, season 2 begins with another revision, which is talking just about the characters that somehow, or if I got anything right after E3, which might see, I think E3 is still going to get two characters. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I've been watching the S. See you guys next time.